So whatever yours is, is part of your discovery and to come to terms with and understand. There, there's a root that, that, that if we only deal with the peripheral, the problem is the root never goes away. The problem with Saul is not only did he keep the root, but he had convinced himself that keeping the root alive was something that was for God. Uh, I'm not reading you the whole story. But let me just for a moment, when, when Saul found, when Samuel, the prophet, said, you can't fool the prophetic, the prophet comes back and he, he, he comes back onto the scene and he confronts Saul. And uh, let's go to verse, let's go to verse uh, 8. It says that he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people. Easy to kill the women and the children, but not easy to kill the king. Why? Look at verse 9. And Saul said the people spared Agag. And this word spared is a word that means to have compassion on. Now saints, listen, we're going to have to fall out of love with the thing that's destroying our spiritual life. We've got to quit loving what God hates. Mm. That's right, yeah. Even if it's the It's not right to bring it into our camp. So he said, I kept Agag alive because we spared him. We had compassion on him. And the best of the sheep we kept, the best of the oxen, here is a rational man. Now watch this, watch this. A rational man trying to make a spiritual decision. There are times where your rationale will not be congruent with the word of the Lord that has been spoken in your life. There will be times where you will look in the natural and say, there's no use in us killing all of the good things that we see here because we can use these good things. We can keep these the best of the best alive. We can bring them back. And you know we can take the sheep, the, the sheep, the oxen, and we're going to bring them back and we're going to give them to the Lord. Because that makes sense. Yeah. Now, now in his mind, he said it doesn't make sense to kill everything because there's no reason. Now, what would happen if God came to you and said, I know you've got $35 in your pocket and I want you to give it all away. And you say, well, I can't give it all away. I don't have any way to get home if I give it all away. Now, you're, you're in Richmond somewhere and you're, you're just above eating your casting and you haven't eaten dinner and you've already planned that when you leave, you're going to Panera, you're going to give you something to eat and then you're going to come on home, put a little bit of gas in your car, and the Lord says, take your $35 and store it to somebody's life. And you say, no, I'm not going to do it. Because I need gas and I need some food. See, there's always an option. I was playing in a, in a golf tournament last Monday for a mission, a, a missions ministry out of Richmond. I was playing with a pastor that just recently came into Redemption Ministries, and he and I were just taking the day and spend some time together. Now, at the conclusion of, of our time together, the Lord said, give him your golf clubs. And I told the Lord, no. I just got them, just had them custom built, had them just sent to me by one of the largest manufacturers in the world. Didn't pay anything for them. Gave them to me. Had them specially made by the top builders in the world. And the Lord said, give them to me. Yeah. I said, no. <laughs> I got them. He's a businessman. He's got more money than I have. I said, Lord, he can buy his own golf club. <laughs> I mean, you know, I said no that day, but the next couple of days, he modeled. He said, how many know you know what I'm going to have to do, don't you? We got a, we got a, we got a uh, schedule time to get together in a couple of weeks. And I don't know what I got to do. Saints, listen to me. There are things in your life God tells you to do and deal with. 
And in your mind, you're thinking, you know, I don't know that I need to do that. I don't know that I need to go that far. Now, I don't know how, I, I know I need to quit, do, but I don't know how I need to go that far. Um, it's too practical. It's not deep enough for you guys. But listen to me, listen to me, saints. Listen, the reality is to keep back something that God said let go of, I don't care how we try to rationalize it in our mind, what God hates cannot be embraced by the people who profess to love him. Now, let me read on. I, I, I need to get to, get to the stuff. I'm 